And I also want to say to the rest of the sisters and brothers that are watching us live on the internet, it is always good to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day. You know, the Lord is blessing us so until it starts to be a challenge just to keep up. But the reason it is, sisters and brothers, is because we deal with the word of God the way it is. Now, this lesson here, just titled Jesus, I, I don't think I've done this in over 25 years. I was just happened to go on through my notes and find out it's one of several lessons that's fallen through the cracks. But why did I, why did I make a lesson just titled Jesus? Because I wanted to rub my Hebrew Israelite brother's nose in it. Plus, I want to show the people that think that they are Christians. I want to introduce them to the real Jesus and not that other Jesus with the blonde hair and blue eyes. But Jesus is the most misunderstood God in the Godhead. Because a lot of people don't say he's God. I have some people running around to call themselves somebody's witnesses. <laughs> saying he is the son of God, but he ain't God. I keep, I, that puzzled me. I'm the son of Lennon Bowie. But I'm still a man. I guess I ain't no dog. So whatever your father is, that's what you're supposed to be. But we're going to have a look at Jesus because we get Old Testament scholars and New Testament uh, 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 believers that use the name Jesus, but they don't have a clue of who they're dealing with. We're just going to introduce Jesus. We're going to bring him on the scene step by step. And we're going to start with something that he said, sister and brother. Because I'm getting tired of, of uh, people lying on Jesus and my Hebrew brothers that don't understand Jesus, which have never accepted it. So I say, I said it then. And this is a strange thing about it. When I gave this lesson, the last time I remember gave, giving this lesson, I had a sister that had really been messed up by the Hebrews. She'd been trying to set with us. And when I did that lesson on Jesus, she never came back. So I'm going to give y'all a chance to leave and not to come back. <laughs> We're going to start this in St. John, the fifth chapter. St. John, chapter five. You know, they want to make, you know, I look, I look at people, I see some of my brothers get a charge out of trying to spit on the name Jesus. And you're going to tell me about Hebrew. Lord told me in Isaiah, the 28th chapter, he said, with a, with a, with, with a stammering lip, and another tongue will I speak to these people. And he also had Paul written right in the tongues chapter. Said, look, with men of other tongues will I speak to these people. But he said, yet they still won't hear. I am a man of another tongue. I don't speak Hebrew. And every time somebody tell me they teach, uh, teach Hebrew, I ask him, tell me how to catch the bus <clears throat> to the airline. And tell me how to get on the airline and tell me how, what airline to get so I will go to wherever I'm, wherever I'm going. And when I get there, the nearest grocery store so I can pick me up something up to eat in Hebrew. <laughs> I can't do that. Well, then you don't know Hebrew. You don't know if the name that they've given you is the real Hebrew name. It might be Esau's language because that's what gave us to us, sisters and brothers. Everything that we speak, every language that we have, being that we are children of captivity, it was given to us by somebody else. Now, the people that speak English, they didn't give me Spanish. They gave me their language. And the people that speak French, they didn't give you German. They gave you their language. Same thing with the Russians that speak Russian. They didn't give you uh, uh, Italian, they gave you their language. So what makes you think Edom is going to give you Hebrew instead of his language? We have a severe problem, sisters and brothers. This big brain that the Lord used us, we'll use about 1.1% of it. 
And we let everybody else think with our head. So we're going to look at Jesus, sisters and brothers. Let's look at what he said first. St. John, the fifth chapter. And we're going to read one verse, verse 39. St. John 5 and 39. Okay, go ahead. Search the scriptures. Uh -huh. For in them you think you have eternal life. He says, search the scripture. For in them you think you have eternal life. Go ahead. And they are they which testify of me. And they are they which testify of me. You know what the scriptures are? From Genesis to Malachi. Jesus didn't see what is written now in the New Testament wasn't even written at that time. Search the scripture. And they are they that testify of me. But let's back up. To St. John, the first chapter. St. John, chapter 1. Because I always see a lot of people that are smarter than me. Brother called me yesterday. Or maybe it was the day before yesterday. You know, when you get old, you can't hit. But anyway, one of them days, he's going to call me and say, I want to give you some scripture. I want you to read. Then call me back. I said, why don't you, you got your Bible in front of you? Yeah, well, let's deal with it now. First thing, he's going to go and tell me, read something about God, say he's God and there's no other. Because he asked me first, he said, do you remember me? I said, no, I don't. And when he went there, I said, yeah, I remember you. And I remember what I did the last time. You have a good day. Because <laughs> I've come to the point, sisters and brothers, I don't, Argue no more with novices that think they know something. Now let's look. We're going to pick this up at St. John 1 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. Go ahead. And the Word was God. Now we have two individuals here. The Word was God. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. Mm -hmm. Then right now we're going to find out who the Word is. Keep your marker here. Don't turn. Keep your mind here, and let's go into Revelation, the 19th chapter. We're coming right back here, because we're going to break this down bit by bit, and you're going to understand this. If you don't understand this, then you left your, your brain on the kitchen table when you left house. Revelation, 19th chapter, and we're going to start at verse 11. Revelation 19 and verse 11. Okay, go ahead. And I saw heaven open, uh -huh. and behold, a white horse. Go ahead. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. Uh -huh. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Now, this is what they don't, want, they don't know about this guy. This is Jesus here, sister and brother. Everybody tell you how much he loved, but he said in righteousness he doeth judge and he make war. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. His eyes were as a flame of fire, uh -huh. and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Go ahead. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. Uh -huh. And his name is called the Word of God. So now we know who the Word is, don't we? We know that's Jesus, don't mm -hmm. we? So in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. Mm -hmm. Does that mean know that Jesus is God? And he was with God. Now let's go back to St. John, the first chapter. Because we're going to lay this thing bare, sisters and brothers. Because too many people talk about Jesus and don't have a clue of what, of who he is. St. John 1, we're going to start reading at the, uh, verse, uh, two. verse 2. Go ahead and read. The no, uh-uh, verse 8. Go ahead. Verse 8. Go ahead. He was not that light. Well, was, no, back up to verse 2, because I don't want to lead this, uh, at verse 3. We're going to throw verse 3 in. Go ahead and read. The same was in the beginning with God. Uh-huh. All things were made by him. Go ahead. And without him was not anything made that was made. Now, look, everything was made by this, him. Who is this? The word, sister and brother. This is what people don't understand. The word is the one that did all of it. Mm -hmm. Now skip down to verse 9. Verse 9 and go ahead. That was the true light. Uh-huh. Which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Go ahead. He was in the world. He was in the world. And the world was made by him. Go ahead. And the world knew him not. He was in the world. And the world was made by him, and the world didn't even know it. Because the because words talking about man. Man didn't know it because man's mind is, have, is not that big. Even today, it appears. Go ahead and read. He came unto his own, uh -huh. and his own received him not. So he came to Israel. Israel didn't receive him then. <laughs> and I have news for you. Who are the biggest kickers against Jesus now? Israel. Israel. 
But go ahead and read. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, uh -huh. even to them that believe on his name. Only one that's going to be, become the sons of God, sisters and brother, the one that believe on his name. He gave them power. What is the power? His word. Mm -hmm. He showed you that when he kicked man out of the garden of Eden. Once that man ate of the tree, he told him not to eat. He said, look, man has become as one of us to know good and evil. Now unless he put forth his hand and eat of the tree of life and live forever, we're going to put him out of the garden. And they did. How did he do that, sisters and brothers? Jesus told you in St. John, the sixth chapter. He said, he that eat my flesh and drank my blood don't have eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. The guy said, how can we eat this man's flesh? He said, look, the flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak, their spirit and their life. In other words, if you ate his word, you would become immortal. So the same thing, those that did believe on him, he gave them power to become the sons of God. If you're a son of God, then you are God. Don't you know people don't understand that? Go ahead and read. Which were born not of the not of blood. Now this is this is Jesus. Which was born not of blood. Go ahead. Nor of the will of the flesh. Nor the will of the flesh. Nor of the will of man. In other words, he didn't have no physical daddy. No flesh and blood daddy. Y'all understand what you're reading here? But go ahead and read. But of God. But of God. Go ahead and read. And the word was made flesh. Uh-huh. And dwelt among us. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Go ahead and read. And we beheld his glory. Uh-huh. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So this word that was with God and was God mm -hmm. was made flesh and dwelt among us. That same word is the one that created everything that was created. That's why I say he was in the world and the world knew it not. So the word was made flesh, sisters and brothers. How was that done? Let's pursue it. Let's go into Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Because we're going to lay this bare, sisters and brothers. Hebrews chapter 10. Because I'm getting tired of all these smart brothers and some sisters. Going to call me and challenge me by using the name of Jesus. Where are you from? Well, I'm from so-and-so. What's the name of your congregation? Well, we ain't got no congregation yet. I said, yeah, you one of them that's in the basement of your mother's house. <laughs> <laughs> Hebrews 10 and verse 5. Hebrews 10 and verse 5. Okay, go ahead. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, uh -huh. he said... Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not. Now this is talking about Jesus now. Remember, he was made flesh and dwelt among us. So that means he, and he was in the world and the world was created by him and the world didn't know it. So when he was made flesh, that means he, he came into the world. When he got ready to come into the world, he said, sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not. Go ahead and read. But a body hast thou prepared me. But a body hast thou prepared me. Look, sisters and brothers, Jesus was God. He couldn't die. So he said, look, I need something that can die. Mm -hmm. So he had a body prepared him. Go ahead. And the father prepared him a body. Verse 7. Go ahead. Six. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Uh -huh. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. So now, he said, he come in the volume of the books. He said, because you didn't have no pleasure in sacrifice and offering. So therefore, you prepared a body mm -hmm. for me. Let's go and see the preparation of this body, sisters and brothers. Let's go on the 139th chapter of Psalm. Psalm 139. We are going to look at it. Look, the Lord don't leave anything, on, no stone unturned. It's just that we don't bother to go read it. Today, we're going to read some of it. Psalm 110. Psalm, I'm, I'm 139, brother. 139th chapter of Psalm. I'm sorry. Did I say that first? Yes. Psalm 139, and we're going to start reading at verse 13. Psalm 139 and verse 13. Okay, go ahead. For thou hast possessed my reign. This is, David told you that the, that the Spirit of God spoke by him. Mm -hmm. So this is Jesus speaking by the 
mouth of David. Mm -hmm. For thou hast possessed my reins, that's my inward part. Go ahead. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. Go ahead and read. I will praise thee, uh -huh. for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh -huh. Marvelous are thy works, Go ahead. and that my soul knoweth right well. He said, look, I'm going to praise you. Marvelous are thy works. My soul know that right well. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. My substance was not hid from thee uh -huh. when I was made in secret. And curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. He said, my suffering was not hid from me when I was made in secret. Mm -hmm. And curiously worked in the lower part of the earth. What mm -hmm. you made, you sent it to the earth. Go ahead and read. Thine eyes did see my substance. Uh -huh. Yet being unperfect. And in thy book all my members were written. Ain't that something? He said, look, you wrote all my members in your book. Go ahead and read. Which in continuance were fashioned. Which in, con in continuance was fashioned. When as yet there was none of them. So this is the preparation of his body. Do you sit right there while the father put it together, sisters and brothers? Laid it all out, wrote it in a book. Just like you getting ready to put a car, build a car. You put it all on the paper first. Then in continuously, you fashion it. And that's what he did with his body. Let's go into 119 chapter of Psalm. Back up to Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Because he said, body has thou prepared me. Because he needed something that could die, sisters and brothers. 119, Psalm 119, and we're going to start at verse 73. Psalms 119 and verse 73. 119 and 73. Because this sister and brother, the Lord put this here because he wanted us to know this thing. Because he wanted to show you how he being God could become man. But he had to possess a body. But a body was prepared for him. Verse 73, go ahead and read. Thy hands have made me and thy, fashioned me. Thy hand have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding uh -huh. that I may learn thy command. Go ahead. They that fear thee will be glad when they see me. That's what they're supposed to be anyway. You understand? This ain't talking about David's not talking about himself. Who look at us. We can't see David, can we? No. So we talking Jesus him. They that fear me will be glad when they see me. Go ahead and read. Because I have hoped in thy word. Because I have hoped in thy word and thy word. Skip down to verse 79. Verse 79. And go ahead. Let those that fear thee. Let those that fear thee turn unto me. Turn unto me, sisters and brothers. Go ahead. And those that have known thy testimonies. So who do you have to go through? Even when you pray, you have to pray to the Father in Jesus' name. Because he is the high priest. So those that fear thee, the one whose body you have prepared, the one that possessed that body, those that fear thee, let them Turn to me. Because mm -hmm. you can't circumvent the high priest, sisters and brothers. That's what, that's what I don't understand by my Hebrew brothers. You look at Aaron's high priest. You could not go and kill a cow and walk into the temple with the blood mm -hmm. and sprinkle it before the veil. Fire from God would have killed you. You had to take the cow to the Levites. They had to kill the cow and had to get the blood to the high priest. And the high priest had to go into the holy place, dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle it seven mm -hmm. times before the veil. Mm -hmm. Then the Lord will forgive you for your sin. But now people think that, hey, we ain't got no high priest. We can go directly to the Lord. Uh-uh. If you understand the priesthood, you cannot circumvent the high priest. Right. And Jesus is the high priest. So now, when he made this body for him, the angel went and planted into this woman. And let me show you what Isaiah said about this. Let's go into Isaiah, the ninth chapter. Isaiah chapter 9. Because, sisters and brothers, I don't think I've done this in 25 years. In fact, it took me a week to understand it again myself. <laughs> Isaiah 9. And we're going to start reading, we're going to read one verse. Isaiah 9 and 6. Isaiah 9 and verse 6. Okay, read it. For unto us a child is born. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Uh-huh. 
and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. Go ahead and read. And his name shall be called Wonderful. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor. Counselor. The mighty God. The mighty God. The everlasting father. They ain't the father, but he is our father. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. The prince of peace. The prince of peace. What man is this that can carry all these titles, sisters and brothers? Mm -hmm. I don't know any. So, in the, and so if that child have all these titles, he had to come from somewhere. Let's see why. Let's go into 1 Timothy, the third chapter. That's why the Lord said the law and the testimony. Mm -hmm. The law and the testimony. If they don't speak according to this, there is no light, which means there is no truth in them, sisters and brothers. So his child is born. I don't know no child other than Jesus that had all these titles. But was he... Born with the father? I don't think so. First Timothy 3, and we're going to read one verse. 16. First Timothy 3 and 16. Okay, go ahead. And without controversy, uh -huh. great is the mystery of godliness. Without controversy, great is the, great is the mystery of godliness. Mm. Remember that, I mean, it's real great. So great that most people don't understand it. Go ahead and read. God was manifest in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. Justified in the spirit. Uh-huh. Seen of angels. Uh-huh. Preached unto the Gentiles. Go ahead. Believed on in the world. Uh-huh. Received up into glory. So who is that that came and went back to, went back to heaven? Jesus. But what did it say? God was manifest in the flesh. In other words, God was came forth in the flesh, a reveal in the flesh. Mm -hmm. So when he came from being God and became a, 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 a child and was born in the, in the family of man, that's why I said he had the word that's used in the seventh chapter of Isaiah, Emmanuel, God is with us. Because yeah, right. he was in the world, the world was made by him, and the world didn't even know. So this is Jesus, sisters and brothers. So we see this body that was made, it was a flesh and blood body. Some people say, well, how can somebody take over a body? How can you dig some dirt out of the ground and make us out of it? That's right. That's right. Ain't nothing impossible for God. He said he did it. He did it. Now let's go in the Hebrews, the second chapter. He even telling you by way, which way he's going to come. That's why anybody... <clears throat> that read this book cannot help but know who Jesus is. And when you start trying to throw dirt on Jesus, that tell me one thing. You are woefully uninformed. I ain't going to use the word dumb no more. Now, sure ain't going to use stupid. I'm just going to say woefully uninformed. <laughs> Hebrews, the second chapter and verse 9. Hebrews chapter 2, Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 9. Because if you're going to serve God, sister mm -hmm. and brother, you've got to find out how. If you don't know how, you can't do it. Verse 9, go ahead. But we see Jesus, uh -huh. who was made a little lower than the angel. Go ahead. For the suffering of death. See, he needed something that could die. That's right. Jesus was God. You can't kill spirit being. That's why God made the lake of fire for Satan and his angels. Mm -hmm. He created them spirit being. They can't die, so we're going to punish them forever and call it the second day. But we don't understand that. So he said, look, he was made a little lower than the angels because the angels are spirit beings, and we are a little lower than the angels, flesh and blood, for the purpose of death. Go ahead and read. Crowned with glory and honor. Go ahead. That he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. So he came to be a sacrifice for sin. Go ahead. For it became him. For it became him. For whom are all things. For whom are all things. And by whom are all things. Wait a minute. He said it again. By whom are all things. Mm -hmm. That means he did the creating, didn't he? That's right. Ain't this what they're saying here? Go ahead and read. And bringing many sons unto glory. Uh-huh. To, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. So now, he is the captain of our salvation. And he came to bring us back to God so we can be changed and become God ourselves. See, God is a uniplural word. One family, but more than one member. Just like man, M-A-N. How many of you guys come under the banner of man? Everybody on the planet. 
but it sounds like a singer, but it's a plural. So now, he came to bring many sons in the glory through suffering, sisters and brothers, so he had to become a sin offering. Skip down to verse 14. Verse 14 and go ahead. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood. For as much then as the children are partakers of the flesh and blood. Go ahead. He also himself likewise took part of the same. So he took part of the same. That means he had to be around to do that, didn't he? Go ahead and read. That through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. Go ahead. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Go ahead. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels. Now why would he do that? That would have defeated his purpose, wouldn't it? Because angels can't die. So he didn't take on him the nature of angels. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. But he took on him the seed of Abraham. But he took upon him the seed of Abraham. Abraham was flesh and blood, sisters and brothers. So he came by way of Abraham. Go ahead and read. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, uh -huh. that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest. Go ahead. And things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. So now, when he became one of us, then he went through all the changes that we had to go through so he could be a more merciful high priest. Because he know that this flesh and blood body is a problem. You understand? I mean, it's a trip. He even got him for a minute. Because he prayed three times. They were sweating like blood drops. Mm -hmm. The Father, if it is possible, take this cup away from me. But he knew he had to die, sisters and brothers. So he took upon him the seed of Abraham. Why the seed of Abraham? Because everything is orchestrated. Then he said, such the scripture, mm -hmm. and them you think you have salvation, but they are they to testify me. So let's show you why he took on the seed of Abraham. Let's go into, into uh, uh, Genesis, the 22nd chapter. Genesis chapter 22. That's why, sisters and brothers, the Lord put everything, he laid everything out in the Old Testament. And if it looks like a change in the New Testament, you know it cannot be. Because the Lord said, I'm God and I change not. That means that somebody, something in there you don't understand. It is all that simple, sisters and brothers. Then I get a lot of children going to come up and argue with me. And when they put scriptures on the table, it don't make no sense. You're not arguing with me. You're arguing with the book. Now we're going to see why he took on the seed of Abraham. Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22, and we're going to start at verse 1. Genesis chapter 22 and verse 1. Okay, read it. And it came to pass after these things uh -huh. that God did tempt Abraham uh -huh. and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. Go ahead. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah. Go ahead. And offer him therefore a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I shall tell thee of. Now, sisters and brothers, I say a fleshly minded, a kernel minded man read this here. Uh oh, the Bible lied. Isaac ain't Abraham's only son. Ishmael is his only son. So the Bible like, no, it wasn't. Because you got to understand that the Lord, Isaac, was the son of the covenant. Abraham introduced Isaac to him. He said, yeah, I know Isaac, your son. He's going to be a great nation. But I, I mean, he said, Abraham is your son, and he's going to be a great nation. But Isaac is the one that I'm going to make my covenant with. Son of the, it's, it, the, uh, the son of the covenant, sisters and brothers, is people that is in agreement with God. That's what a covenant is. He says, so now, Ishmael, as far as a son, is good, but unless you enter into a covenant with me, you don't exist. Skip down to verse 9. Verse 9 and go ahead. And they came to the place which God had told him of, 
And Abraham built an altar there uh -huh. and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Go ahead. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Uh -huh. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. So the angel called him. And he said, here am I. What did he say? Go ahead and read. And he said, lay not thine hand upon the lad. Uh -huh. Neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. Now, you know, people have argued with me when I, when I read this. I said, you know, look like God didn't know what Abraham was going to do. God know everything. I said, I, don't, I ain't challenging you to that. I said, look like he didn't know what Abraham was going to do. <laughs> because he said, now I know that thou fearest me. What's that, what does that imply, sister and brother? That he didn't know. But you ain't arguing with me, you're arguing with this. Go ahead and read. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked. No, that's enough. He said, now nah, I know. Now nah, skip down to verse 15. Verse 15 and go ahead. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. Go ahead. And said, by myself have I sworn, uh -huh. saith the Lord. Go ahead. For because th thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, uh -huh. and in multiplying I will multiply thy seeds as the stars of, hev uh -huh. of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore. Go ahead. And thy seeds shall possess the gate of his enemies. Now look, first thing he said, because you didn't withhold your son, your only son, mm -hmm. so I'm going to bless your seed. I'm gonna, this is a physical seed. I'm going to multiply it like the stars of heaven and the sands of the sea. But then he have another seed. Mm -hmm. That he speaks about. Go ahead and read. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. And in thy seed shall all of the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my word. Let's see who this seed of Abraham was. Mm -hmm. Let's go into Galatians, the third chapter. Galatians, the third chapter. See, this is what happened when you kick against the New Testament. You don't get the whole story, therefore you don't have the story. Same thing if you're a New Testament Christian and won't read the Old Testament. You don't know the story because you don't have the story, sister and brother. You have to deal with both of them. They complement one another. The Lord designed it that way. So can't no deceiver deliberately mess up this word. He ain't going to get smart enough to mess it up. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. And we're going to start at verse 8. Galatians 3. And verse 8, 3 and verse 8, okay, read it. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, uh -huh. preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, and these shall all nations be blessed. Saying now the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the nations. That's what heathen mean. Mm -hmm. It don't mean some uncoop person. I had one, I had one of them referencing the Bible mean non-believers. That ain't got nothing to do with heathen. He was a man of me nation. But he's going to justify him what? Through faith. Who faith? Their faith. If they believe on him, they're going to be justified. Okay? And this is the thing that he preached to Abraham saying, in thee shall all nations be blessed. Mm -hmm. Skip down to verse 15. Verse 15 and go ahead. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men. Uh -huh. Though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth. Or added there too. Look, Abraham kept his covenant, kept mm -hmm. his part of the covenant. Mm -hmm. Therefore, Jesus couldn't change it. Mm -hmm. He had to keep his covenant. You can't add to it and you can't take That's from right. it. That's right. And the part of that covenant, sisters and brothers, was the circumcision. Mm -hmm. You got to do it all or none of it work. You make a deal, I'm going to pay you 150000 for the house. You get to the end of that signing paper, you sign the paper, then you put up 50000 So what's this? Well, it's for the house. Hey, that's not according to the covenant. The covenant said 150,000. Mm -hmm. So if you won't honor your end of the covenant, I ain't going to honor mine. You cannot have the house. Right. Same thing with God. Can't be changed. Go ahead and read. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. Uh -huh. And he said not and to seeds as of many, but as of one. He and said not a seed, remember? He said, not as many, but as one. Go ahead and read. And to thy seed, which is Christ. And to thy seed, which is Christ. So that 
is the seed, sisters and brothers, that all of the nations that are urged going to be blessed. Jesus, sisters and brothers, him. Skip down to verse 27, because I want you to understand what you got to do. Mm-hmm. Verse 27, go ahead. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Go there, ahead. There's neither Jew nor Greek. Go ahead. There's neither bond nor free. Go ahead. There's neither male nor female. Go ahead. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. So if, you, if you're baptized into Jesus, that's why we baptize you in his name. Mm-hmm. That transcends nationality. That trans- transcends gender. That transcends race and everything else because you're all one in Christ Jesus. Go ahead and read. And if you be Christ. And if you be Christ. Then are you Abraham's seed. Then are you Abraham's seed. And heirs according to the promise. And heirs according to the promise. Because who did God, God make a promise to? Abraham and his seed. Nobody else. So if you a physical seed, you got to become a spiritual seed. If you are a stranger and not a physical seed of Abraham, you have got to come spiritually the seed of Abraham. That's why he said through faith that the heathens, which is a nation, can take part of this, com- this, this salvation. But what do you have to do? You have to be Christ, sisters and brothers. In other words, you got to go and get baptized in his name because he is the one that reduced himself mm-hmm. and suffered shame and death just to save us. So this whole thing we're dealing about is Jesus. So he was God. Didn't say in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. Now let's go into Isaiah, the 50th chapter. Isaiah chapter 50. Because sisters and brothers, this is laid out. This is laid out here so you will understand what to do to save yourself. If the Lord didn't want you to know this, it wouldn't be in this book. It's all that simple, being that he is not a vain God. If you don't want you to have it, it's not in the book. Just like when John heard the seven thunders. That's right. And he got ready to light, right? The angel said, see that y'all do it not. That's right. Seal up there. Don't write it. Some people say, well, I know what he wrote. That's a mystery to me. Remember, my brother said to me one time, well, you know, I, I, know, I know what the, uh, 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 the seven thunders wrote. I just said, yeah, right, and walked away from it. Because <laughs> I didn't want to disrespect him and call him something. Because if, it's, if, if, if the Lord had revealed it, he sure haven't let us know that this is the seven thunders. So if he wants you to know, it is written. So now the Lord, he reduced himself. Because he was in the beginning with God and he was God. So he could suffer shame and death for us. But he was God. Isaiah 50. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. Isaiah 50 and verse 1. This is God speaking here. Go ahead and read. Thus saith the Lord. Uh-huh. Where's the bill of your mother's divorce? Go ahead. Whom I have put away. He's talking to Israel here. Because the Lord gave Israel a bill of divorce, but he didn't divorce Judah. But then that's another lesson. Go ahead and read. Or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Go ahead. Behold, for your iniquities have you sold yourselves. Uh Uh-huh. And for your transgressions is your mother put away. See, the whole thing is, he said, hey, I ain't got no money for being, uh, uh, when when, when I sold you. Your iniquity sold you. In other words, that's why you're in captivity today. The Lord told you, if you keep my commandments and statutes and do all I say, I'm going to make you the top people on the whole planet. I'm going to make you the financiers. You will be on the top only. But if you know, don't, I'm going to bring you down. You're going to have to borrow it. You ain't going to have nothing. I'm going to take everything from you. Then I'm going to throw you in the hull of the ship. And I'm going to send you into Egypt, which to us is the house of bondage again. And you're going you're gonna to be sold for male and female slave. Tell me something. How did y'all get here? And what happened to you when you got here? <laughs> we sold ourselves. We did. Nobody else can be here responsible. But go ahead and read. Wherefore, when I came, was there no man? He said, when I came, there was no man. Go ahead and read. When I called, was there none to answer? And when I called, didn't nobody answer? Is my hand shortened at all uh-huh. that it cannot redeem? He says, is my hand shortened at all that I cannot redeem? I'm going to tell you about me. 
Go ahead and read. Or have I no power to deliver? Uh huh. Behold, at my rebuke, I dry up the sea. He said, I want to tell you about me. I'm the one that split the Red Sea. I rebuked it. If I can drive the sea, I can save you. That's right. Go ahead and read. I make the rivers a wilderness. Go ahead. Their fish stinketh. I dried up the Jordan River. Mm -hmm. I dried up rivers and, the, and whatever fish was in it, they died and stink. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Because there's no water uh -huh. and dieth for thirst. Go ahead. I clothe the heavens with blackness. I'm the one that created darkness. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And I make sackcloth their covering. Uh -huh. The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned. Wait a minute now. This guy got all this power. He done split the sea. He done dried up rivers. He done created darkness. Now he's going to turn around and tell us that the Lord God have given him the tongue of the Lord. Whoa. Who is more powerful than this kind of power? Mm -hmm. That lets you know there's somebody else, don't it? Mm -hmm. But that somebody else ain't the one that's talking, is it? Mm -hmm. Pay attention, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. That I should know how to speak a word in season uh -huh. to him that is weary. Now, you know, we need to learn some of that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people have their troubles and all, we're we going to come up and we're going to condemn them. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe you did something wrong. Mm -hmm. They don't need that. They need a little compassion. Tell them something good. If you have to lie to do it, then don't say nothing. Just smile and pat them. <laughs> but don't bring no ugly conversation. They're already grieving. So he said, he taught him to do that, the tongue of the learn. How him to, see, to say the right thing to him that is weary. Go ahead and read. He wakened morning by morning. Uh -huh. He wakened mine ear to hear as to learn. Oh, so all this, he said, the one that, that, uh, 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 that sent him said, did that, didn't mm -hmm. he? Go ahead and read. The Lord God had opened mine ear, uh -huh. and I was not rebellious. Go ahead. Neither turned away back. He said, uh, he opened my ears and I was not rebellious, neither did I turn back from what I had to do. What did I have to do? Go ahead and read. I gave my back to the smiter. I gave my back to the smiters. And my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. Uh-huh. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. Ain't that something? Whoever this guy is that created darkness and drive up the river, that split the sea. He said, he gave his back to the smiters. And it's cheap to them to pluck off the hair. And he allowed people to spit in his face. He must really love this creation to go through that. I don't think I could pull that off. But let's go and see who it is. Let's go into Matthew, the 26th chapter. Matthew chapter 26. See, what we're doing is we're searching the scripture. And then we're co-signing it with the New Testament. That's why the Lord says, search the scripture. Matthew chapter 26. This is when they went out and they grabbed Jesus and they tried him when he was out on the mount with his apostles. They went out there and they tried him. Let's look at some of the things that happened to him. Matthew 26, and we're going to start at verse 57. Matthew 26 and verse 57. Okay, go ahead. And they that had laid hold on, on Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, uh -huh. the high priest where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Now, they was all similar because they sent out there to get it. Skip down to verse 6 to 3. Because Jesus went and he go through, they had all kind of false accusers, people lying on him, mm -hmm. bringing false witnesses. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't open his mouth because Jesus knew what he had to do, sisters and brothers. Verse 6 to 3. Verse 6 to 3, and go ahead. But Jesus held his peace. Uh-huh. And the high priest answered and said unto him, Go ahead. I adjure thee by the living God uh -huh. that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ the son of God. No, no, no. They didn't believe he was the Christ. But because he was putting them out of the business with the truth, mm -hmm. they wanted some reason to kill him and, 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 ha and have it justified in the eyes of the people. Uh -huh. So how long are you going to keep fooling around? If you be the Christ, then tell me. If you be the anointed one, tell me. If you be the Messiah, tell me now. Tell us. So Jesus said it. Go ahead and read. Jesus said unto him, thou hast said, nevertheless, I say unto you. He said, you said it, partner. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, I say unto you. Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power uh -huh. and coming in the clouds of heaven. Ain't that something when mm -hmm. they heard that? Instead of them getting scared, uh-huh, got you now. Mm -hmm. By your own words. And what happened? Go ahead and read. Then the high priest rent his clothes, saying he had spoken blasphemy. Wait a minute, you asked him the question. <laughs> 
And he's going to answer the question now. You're going to call him a blasphemer. Mm-hmm. That means that this was a kangaroo court. Right. Either way it went, Jesus was not going to get out of the other line. Right. So he's rent in his coat. So he has spoken blasphemy. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and read. What further need have we of witnesses? Uh-huh. Behold, now ye have heard his blasphemy. Go ahead. What think ye? Uh-huh. They answered and said, he is guilty of death. Ain't that so? Go ahead and read. Then they then did they spit in his face uh-huh. and buffeted him uh-huh. and others smote him with the palms of their hands. Now he allowed them to do that. How do I know that? Because he just told you in Isaiah, I gave my back to the smiters and them that pluck off the hat. Mm-hmm. I suffered the shame of, 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 being, of being spit on. He let him do that so he could save this foolish man and we ain't got enough sense to know that what went down. That's why We're going to have a problem. He went through all that, sisters and brothers, and still he came to Israel when he was God, and he came to Israel when he was man, because he came to his own. But still Israel as a whole has never accepted Jesus. And I got some news for you. That same mentality exists today. That's right. Now you allow Esau to take up your name Israel Mm -hmm. and you allow the Gentiles in the name of Jesus to separate you from the God of Israel Mm -hmm. because you don't like him anyway. There wasn't no J in Hebrew. I said, ain't no alphabets in Hebrew. Mm. Well, J didn't come along to so-and-so, so-and-so. That's what somebody told you. Was you, (laughs) Dad? We got all these highly educated linguists among Israel. We know the languages. But sisters and brothers, Israel never accepted him. Let's go into Isaiah, the eighth chapter. Isaiah chapter eight. It's because they don't understand. It's almost like our people get a kick out of insulting Jesus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I knew a guy, and this is a God's truth. When years ago in uh, uh, Washington Park, I ain't going to call his name. He said if he saw Jesus, he'd put six jackets in his chest. <laughs> and when he got all old and messed up and he done messed his son up, you know what this guy had to say, nerve to say when he saw that the Lord was elevating me? Boy, uh, 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 will you uh, take care of my son? I said, I can't do it, partner. He's too messed up. He won't listen to nothing I got to say. Mm-hmm. When he got old and was getting ready to die, he realized he had really messed up. He couldn't straighten out the mess that he had. Now you're going to drop it on me? Mm-hmm. I don't think so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's the truth. God is my witness. Because he talking about shooting Jesus with a revival because mm-hmm. we ain't never accepted him. Isaiah 8 and verse 13. We're going to start at verse 13. But we, but those of us that do, we're going to sanctify him. In other words, we're going to set him apart. Right. Go ahead and read. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself uh-huh. and let him be your fear uh-huh. and let him be your dread. And let him be your dread. Mm-hmm. Put, your, put your troubles on him. Go ahead and read. And he shall be for a sanctuary, uh-huh. but for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel. Look, if you let him fear and let him be your fear and your dread, he will be a sanctuary unto you. When you're in your deepest trouble, when you're at your lowest point, you can turn to him and he will help you. That's if you really mm-hmm. allow him to be your sanctuary. I know, sisters and brothers. And even like Paul them said, when the people got to the point where they was, got so bad that they, he thought they was going to die, they said, hey, we would already decided we're going to turn our over, self over to the Lord and we'll see one another in the resurrection. Yeah. In other words, we're going to take him to the last day mm-hmm. and beyond. See, but those that don't believe in him, then he is a stone of stumbling, like I said, and he is a stone of stumbling to both of the houses of Israel. That's the mm-hmm. Judah and Israel. That's right. 
Go ahead and read. For gin and for a snare uh -huh. to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Oh, for gin and for a snare mm -hmm. to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. In other words, we're going to suffer because of that too. And we have suffered. We can't recover because we won't deal with the one that sent forth to recover us. That's why Jesus said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, that killeth the prophets and stoned at those that are sent to you. How many times would I have recovered you, but you would not? How many times I would have gathered you, but you would not? In other words, we wouldn't let the Lord bless us. Go ahead and read. And many among them shall stumble uh -huh. and fall uh -huh. and be broken uh -huh. and be snared and be taken. And that's what's going to happen. Not only now, but in the world to come. Jesus said in Matthew, the eighth chapter, when he got ready to heal this uh, centurion, which is probably was an Italian. When he said, look, my servant lay at home sick of the palsy. Will you heal him? He said, yeah, I come on over. He said, no, don't come in my house. My house. I ain't worthy for you to come into my house. That's right. I got seven. When I say go, he go. When I say come, he come. In other words, he's telling my house is not clean enough for you to come into. He said, just said a word and it'll happen. That's right. Jesus looked at this guy and he said, look, I have not seen this kind of faith. No, not in Israel. That's right. That's right. Told the guy, be it as you believe. He said, and they're going to come from the east and the west mm -hmm. and sit down in the kingdom of heaven, which is the kingdom of the father when it comes, with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the children of the kingdom going to be cast out, mm -hmm. where they're going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Who are the children of the kingdom? Israel. Because they rejected this stone, a stone. They rejected him, sisters and brothers. He's a stone of stumbling to both of the house of Israel. They are going to fall. They're going to be broken. And we have been broken. And we have been snared. And we have been taken. Like the Lord said, we're hid away in prison house. Let's go into Matthew's 21st chapter. I'm going to show you what this stone said. Matthew chapter 21. Matthew's 21. And we're going to start at verse 42. Matthew 21. And we're going to start reading at verse 42. And Jesus talk, talking to these people. Then he took them back to the scripture. Mm -hmm. Verse 42. Go ahead. Jesus saith unto them, Did ye never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? The same has become the head of the corner. Ain't that so? He said, didn't you, ever read, didn't you never read that? So I'll let you know these Hebrews didn't read the book. Mm -hmm. You understand? They didn't read the book. He said, the stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. Go ahead and read. This is the Lord's doing, uh -huh. and it is marvelous in our eyes. Go ahead. Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you uh -huh. and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. Now that's the king. Those are the people, the people that's going to come in the first resurrection, sisters and brothers, because the Lord told you in Daniel, the seventh chapter, that the saints going to take the kingdom and That's rule right. the kingdom. He ain't going to give it to That's another right. nation on this earth. That's right. To the saints. Go ahead and read. And whosoever shall fall on this stone. And he gave them some, a square warning now. Mm -hmm. And whosoever shall fall on this stone. Shall be broken. Shall be broken. But on whomsoever it shall fall. Uh -huh. It will grind him to power. But whoever this stone fall on is going to be grind to power. He's letting you know, partner. You keep mm -hmm. messing with me. You got something coming. Mm -hmm. And Israel don't know that, sister and brother. Because he said he do his judge and make what? That's right. So he quoted, though, 118 chapter Psalm about the stone which the builders rejected. Psalm 118. Psalm chapter 118. Because, sisters and brothers, if you don't read, then you're going to always have your life in the balance. You're going to be always walking on the edge of the lake of fire. But you don't have sense enough to know it because you don't read. This is especially some dangerous time and the biggest danger is on its way. You got to deal with this, sister and brother. If you don't, you're going to have your problem. 
118 chapter Psalm, and we're going to start at verse 22. Psalm 118, Psalm 118 and verse 22. Go ahead. The stone which the builders refused uh -huh. has become the, the headstone of the corner. And, he's, and now he's the headstone of the corner mm -hmm. now. He's the high priest. He's the one pleading your case. That's right. And don't you know Israel is still refusing him? The only Israelites that don't refuse him is the one that's hemmed up in them Sunday churches that don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. But then they lying on it because they are teaching behind the Gentile. And the Lord told Israel, said that Israel only have I known. How you going to teach something that you don't know about? So you got to put a lie out there. And what we doing? We sucking the lie up. The teachers have become the students. And when the teacher become the students, everybody is dumb, ain't they? It's all that simple. Verse what? Go ahead. Verse 23. Verse 23, go ahead. This is the Lord's doing. Uh-huh. It is marvelous in our eyes. It's the Lord's doing. He is the one that made them the head of the corner. Go ahead and read. This is the day which the Lord hath made. Uh huh. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Now, this is the day that he's made. What day was that? The day of salvation. Mm -hmm. Look what he says here. Go ahead and read. Save now. Uh huh. I beseech thee. Go ahead. Oh, Lord. Save now, I beseech thee. That's when Jesus was coming in in uh, Matthew 21st chapter. You can read it on your own when he rode in on the donkey. That's what they were saying. Hosanna. Hosanna. That means save now. Save now. Mm -hmm. Because he is the only Savior. Save now. Go ahead and read. Oh, Lord, uh -huh. I beseech thee, uh -huh. send now prosperity. Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. He says, save now. Who is he that came in the name of the Lord? Jesus, sister and brother. Mm -hmm. Because this man sinned against God, and the wages of sin is death. We sacrifice animals, but animal sacrifice couldn't save us. Therefore, he had to come in person and die for our sins. That's why he needed a body. He had to do it because animal sacrifice couldn't. So he needed a body so he could come and lay down his life. Let's back up to the 40th chapter of Psalm. You want to finish it? What verse was it? Finish, finish it. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. Okay, now. 40th chapter of Psalm. Psalm 40th chapter. Because sisters and brothers, this is all orchestrated. This is all laid out. And we're going to show you there ain't no accident. Because the Lord told you surely he would do nothing but reveal his secrets to his prophets. So you ain't going to be blindsided if you read his prophecy. He ain't going to come up on you as a thief in the night. Psalm 40, and let's start reading at verse 6. Psalm 40 and verse 6. Okay, read it. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. That's why he had to come. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Mine ears has thou opened. Uh-huh. Burnt offering and sin offering has thou not required. He have not required. All you have to do was keep it. Lord, mm -hmm. when I brought, told Israel, when I brought you out of Egypt, mm -hmm. I made no mention of Adam's That's sacrifice. Right. That's right. I told you to obey my words. That's right. He didn't require that. But because we didn't, now he had to kill animals to keep from killing us because when something, somebody sinned, something got to die. He said, but it wasn't required. Go ahead and read. Then said I, uh -huh. lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. Oh, and uh, aren't we walking him through this book here? Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. Just like he said, when he spoke to them Jews, mm -hmm. search the scripture and them you think you have salvation, but they are they that testify of me. Mm -hmm. David just co-signed what John wrote. In other words, Jesus just co-signed what he said. That's right. Go ahead and read. I delight to do thy will. Uh -huh. Oh, my God. Go ahead. Yeah. The law is within my heart. So I come in the volume of the book. I, I delight to do your will. Your law is in my heart, sisters and brothers. He is coming to do this. Let's
God gave us. So when you went down to that wall, I'm the day, even so by the right. Being God has become.